This camera right here is officially the smallest PTZ camera that I have in this studio. This was sent over from the folks at Ozbot. Now, I'm no stranger to the Ozbot line of cameras. Quite frankly, a few years ago when I saw that they had a Kickstarter program, I ordered one of their Ozbot cameras that allowed you to track movement. And on that particular camera, you could even put in an SD card and record. And it was one of the very first cameras that really had AI tracking capabilities. And then I have my latest cool toy. This is the Ozbot. Uh, tail and this actually goes around and follows you um, automatically it has nice AI tracking built into it so I'm actually going to start taking that when I do more uh, in-person live training events and I don't have a camera person with me I can actually just take that set it up on my tripod and it follows me around so when Ozbot reached out for me to review this particular 4k PTZ webcam I definitely wanted to check it out Let's begin with what comes inside of the box. You'll notice that you'll have a user guide and instruction manual, and I highly encourage that you check it out. There's some really good information in here and some good learning information for you, especially when it comes to how to control the camera, because this little PTZ camera can be controlled not only through hand gestures, but voice commands as well. And along with going through the instruction manual, make sure that you also update the firmware as one of the very first things that you do before using this camera. Now I noticed when I went to download the app based software for this camera to be able to control it on my desktop, I was actually prompted to update to the latest firmware. So that's a really good software update from Ozbot to include in their cameras. But if you don't get this update, make sure that you do go to their website and download the latest firmware before getting started with your camera. You'll also notice inside of the box, you have a nice hard shell case. This is gonna be used to protect your camera and I can definitely see this protecting my camera, especially when I choose to take it on location because I think these PTZ cameras can be used both in studio and out in the field because they're that good. And we'll talk about that. Now, once you open up the case, you will obviously see the camera. You also see a USB-C to USB-C cable. And there's also a USB-C to USB-A adapter inside as well. It's a pretty straightforward, simple inside of the box and you won't have any issues getting this connected. I was able to set up this camera with no problem on both my Mac mini computer here on my desktop and also on my Windows laptop, which is an Acer gaming laptop. Now for setting this up on my Mac mini, I used the USB-C cable that was included and connected it directly to the back of my Mac mini. No problems, straightforward. Now on my laptop, I just used the same USB-C cable and connected it from the back of the camera into my laptop with no problem. And they were both easily recognized by my computer. Now in order to set up this camera and position it to your liking, you can do it a couple different ways. You can use the included magnetic stand and use this to mount onto your camera and then place it on top of your large monitor like I do here or place it directly on top of your laptop. Another way that you can set this up is by setting it on a tripod. It does have a thread adapter under the bottom, which makes it easy to mount on any tripod. Now, obviously there's no tripod included, but if you have one, you'll have no problem getting it mounted on a tripod because if you don't wanna have it in your studio, like I do right now, and you wanna have it on location, now you have that option and you're not forced to mount your webcam on top of your monitor. Now, when it comes to the specs of this camera, I'm not one of those that's gonna rattle off a whole bunch of technical things for you because most of you all really don't care. You really wanna know about the quality, the audio and use cases. So I'll put the specs on the screen, but I will say this camera definitely has impressed me. Now with PTZ cameras in general, something that I've mentioned multiple times on this channel is that you really need to have good light. Because of the sensor size in PTZ cameras are typically smaller than those in mirrorless cameras, then you'll notice that you may have a lot of grain or the image quality isn't as clear as you may like. Now with this mini PTZ camera, 
I definitely thought that I would have the same issue that I do in some of my larger PTZ cameras that are at the 1080p quality. Now, this is a 4K PTZ cameras, so I didn't want to set my expectations too high because it was 4K, but I did think it could compete with a PTZ camera of a larger size. Boy, was I wrong. This 4K webcam can compete with large 4K PTZ cameras hands down. Now, I'm sure you're very familiar with webcams and have used them in the past. Maybe the built-in camera that's been on your laptop or maybe an external camera that you bought during 2020 when there was limited supply and you were trying to get your hands on anything that you could use to attend your work virtual meetings. Or maybe you use the webcam as a starting point to get started recording your podcast. So what I wanted to do was set this camera up to really see if it could be the go-to camera and really try to max this out. So I went with a program called Ecamm. Now, you'll be hearing a lot more about Ecamm because it's going to be the primary platform that I'm going to be using for live streaming and recording content here for YouTube videos. Now, what I liked about this camera and the combination of Ecamm is that as soon as I plugged this camera into my Mac, Ecamm was able to find the camera, recognize it, both the video side and the audio side. And with the click of a button, I was able to hit record on Ecamm so that you guys can see the footage coming directly out of this camera. These cameras look good, they sound good. You can really use these as a in-person studio podcast. This will be easy to travel with because the cameras are so small and they pick up good audio. This is something to really check out. I'm really liking what I'm able to do without having so much equipment and larger equipment. So if you're looking for a small, simple solution to do just a sit down and maybe improve your webcam, or maybe you want to step it up a little bit and have a little bit better quality, you can do this. And if you want to step it up a little bit more and do more of a production, you can have multiple cameras. As you can see, the quality of this webcam's video is pretty impressive. Now, I am in a basement studio where I do have control over lighting, and lighting is always important. But even with bad lighting, this camera still does very well. In a very dark situation where I didn't think it would perform as well as it does, I am impressed with the overall video quality. But you can't have good video without good audio. And so it was important to test out what the audio would sound like on this webcam. Maybe you don't have a professional camera like I'm using right now with this Shure SM7B. Maybe you just want to invest in an all-in-one setup, a camera, microphone, all-in-one that is really easy to use. Or maybe in some cases, having that audio backup on that camera is something that you're interested in as well. Now, if you wanted to use this camera by itself, I think you'd be in pretty good shape. But this isn't just any regular webcam. This is an AI tracking webcam as well. And you can use hand gestures to control the movements of the camera. Now, having hand gestures are great. Now, in order to learn which gestures control which functions, make sure you check out that user manual because you can zoom in, zoom out, start tracking and stop tracking all with using hand gestures. But if hand gestures aren't enough, you can also use audio. You can actually speak to this webcam and give it the instructions of how you want it to move, how you want it to zoom in. And so here's a quick demo of that as well. This webcam is unique in the fact that it also responds to voice commands. So in the user instruction guide, you'll find a list of these commands that you can talk to your Ozbot Tiny 2 and it will respond. So for example, let's try this one. Track me. Now once I said those words, now the Ozbot will actually begin to track me. Zoom in closer. Zoom out further. And if that's not enough, you can download the software app and you can control the camera through software. This will allow you to pan, tilt, zoom the camera, move it up and down, left and right. It even gives you added functionality to go in and change different settings inside of the camera. 
So one of the ways that you can control this webcam is through the desktop application. You can download this for Mac or your Windows computer. Now, why I love having a desktop application to control the camera is because you can't physically move it with your hand and have it stay in position. You don't want to touch a PTZ camera anyway because you could mess up the inner workings and you don't want to do that. So making sure that you can control these cameras in a way that is safe is definitely important. One of those ways is this desktop application. And as you can see on the screen, there are quite a few different settings menus that you can go through to customize this camera and have it move in the way that works best for you. Now with someone that moves a lot in my space, especially when I'm live streaming on Amazon, doing product reviews and demos and doing a tour of the space, I need to make sure that I can control this very easily and still be able to live stream without it becoming a distraction. So one of the settings I can definitely see myself using a lot is normal tracking and motion because this is going to allow the camera to go ahead and track me. Now, I can always use the voice commands as well, but if I'm sitting down and I have this open, it's very easy to just click on it, or if the voice commands don't seem to want to work, or the hand gestures don't want to work, I can do it this way. So when you think about that, that's three different ways to control this camera. Some of the other options I see here are upper body, headless, close up, and lower body. And I'm really gonna probably use the upper body the most because I want this camera to frame me properly. I want to be in the frame where it just doesn't look obvious that I have no camera operator. I want these cameras to make it seem as though someone is physically behind the camera and controlling it. And having these different options to me is going to give me the best results. There's also a desk mode, a whiteboard mode, a hand mode, and a group mode. And if I had a whiteboard, which is something that it's making me think about, is that it can know that there is a whiteboard in the frame. So this camera is gonna be really good for those people that are doing instructions and lessons. So there's a lot of different use cases for this webcam. Now down below, we have access to the gimbal, and this will allow you to just simply reposition the camera in the way that works best for you. So I can move this all around this space, but ideally I wanna frame it up just right for this video. And if you want to reframe it, you can simply use the gimbal in this app. So definitely play around in the app, take a look at all the different settings that you have access to the autofocus, the exposure, anti-flicker, white balance settings. So you can really fine tune this, even adjusting the contrast, saturation, sharpness, and hue to have those different effects. So you could make it look as wild as you want with this camera just by making the necessary changes inside of this app. And if those three ways of controlling this camera was not enough, you can even control it with a remote control. All you have to do is pop off the back of the remote and take the USB dongle that's on the inside, plug it into the computer that you're using for this camera, and do make sure that you have some batteries because it does not come with batteries. And now you can control this camera with a dedicated remote control. Now you have all kinds of flexibility in how you can use this camera. So not only is the audio great, the picture quality is phenomenal and the functionality of controlling it is just four times great because there's four different ways that you can do it. To say that I'm impressed with this camera is an understatement because it blew away my expectations of the word webcam. And if you ever used a webcam, you know that you're not getting the best quality all the time, all the way around. Even the webcam on my expensive gaming application just acts crazy sometimes. Trying to record my webcam and using that camera for emergency situations is not something I ever want to deal with because the video quality is bad, it doesn't work consistently, and it's just not a pleasant experience for the person that's gonna be watching my videos. So this little tiny webcam is gonna allow me to easily pack it up and take it in my backpack with me, and I can always rely on having a really good video quality, and if I don't have a microphone, I can just rely on the embedded microphone in this camera.
But you guys know how we do here in the studio. If you're subscribed to this channel, you know that I have a multiple cameras. And one of the things that I asked Ozbot is if I could have multiple Tiny2 webcams to test out a multi-cam situation. And this is why I wanted to go with Ecamm as the software for demonstrating a situation that you could use these cameras in. Let's say you wanna set up a podcast studio with multiple camera angles, or maybe you wanted to record YouTube content with multiple camera angles. Well, because these cameras are simple USB-C connections and Ecamm allows you to bring in multiple cameras without a physical hardware switcher, I was able to connect two of these tiny two webcams directly to my computer and have a multi-camera setup. And just by a click of a button inside of Ecamm, switch between the two camera angles. And what you can really do to take this to the next level is turn on the tracking feature of both of these cameras and then switch between the two cameras. And you really can create an incredible experience for your viewers. They will think that you have multiple camera operators when in fact you just have multiple cameras that have the ability to track you. And with using the right software, you really can make these cameras do some amazing and incredible things and create that video experience that we're all trying to do. If you're using multiple Osbot Tiny webcams, you can really get creative. Right now I have two cameras plugged into my computer and I have them both coming into the Ecamm software. And why I like Ecamm so much is because they make it super easy to switch between multiple cameras without the need for a video switcher. So I have this main camera connected directly to my computer and I also have a second Tiny2 connected directly to my Mac Mini. And without any video switcher hardware and just using the Ecamm software, I'm able to switch between my two cameras with a click of a button. They are both literally connected directly to my computer and I can just switch between them as I wish for my video podcast, for a training video, or maybe I'm walking around the studio and I wanna be able to have a little bit more flexibility in my movements. I can move around and then switch my cameras with the click of a button. So having these both in tracking mode makes it easy to just move around this studio. So I can have one camera as my main shot, I can have a side angle camera as another shot, and I really have that ability to move around the room, move around the space. Maybe I wanna teach, maybe I wanna train, maybe I wanna demo. Having multiple cameras allows me to do this. This is pretty amazing to be able to just switch between the cameras anywhere I want to. And both of these cameras are actually following, but because they're positioned in two different angles, I have two different effects that I can bring into this video. Now, if you're interested in this camera, I'm gonna link to it in the description section of this video. And I think I have an idea of another use case for this camera. I'll see you guys in the next video.